All right. Well, good morning. Um, I know it says I'm going to talk about prayer, but you know I'm just going to talk about what I talk about, and we'll see if prayer hits it. Um, <laughs> in the science of mind teaching, we come back again and again to this idea that we make our life from the inside out. You know, in 1925, we realized from quantum physics that the experiences we have on Earth are due to human consciousness. The human consciousness is intricately involved in all of these experiences. And the way Ernest Holmes used to talk about it is he would say that if you would change your thinking, you would change your life. Now, that idea of changing your thinking to change your life, that's created from the inside out. So there was a man uh, who's written a book. Uh, his name is Bruce Lipton, and his book is The Biology of Belief. Um, and he's sort of one of the big science guys out there now. Uh, he says less than 1% of disease on Earth is due to genetics. I thought that was fascinating. That just like hit me over, uh, knocked me over. He says the rest is shaped by our consciousness and our response to the environment and our perceptions. So he says we have control over all of that. Our consciousness, our perceptions, our environment, we get to be in charge of those things. And so, you know, everybody is familiar with this idea. So people will say, well, I just don't think your mind has that much to do with it. But, you know, probably since all of us were in school, we have heard about this thing called the placebo effect. You know, where they tell you, we're going to give you this medicine, but you might not get the medicine. You might get a sugar pill. And people get healed with the sugar pill. Well, how is that possible? Well, because it has to do with the power of their mind, right? Your thought is what actually healed you. So we all understand this as students of the science of mind, that negative thinking takes you to a destination that you actually don't want. So think about that the next time you're being really negative. That is a highway to an experience, to a life that you don't want. Because the negative in, uh, stuff in life, seems to me, comes from negative programming from whenever, way back when. Right? Now, if we have a positive approach, if we are on the affirmative side of life, on the affirmative side of the street, as I like to think of it, that takes us toward a greater experience of life, greater aliveness, greater healing. But again, the negativity is always what's going to lead us to an experience of dis-ease. So if you say you have no power over it, you have no power over it. Yeah, that's how the law works. That's how spiritual law works that we are working with all the time. But to say, I have no power over it, you are saying, I am, I am, I am a victim. And, and victim mentality is just not where healing happens. Your physical expression is a complement to the way you live your life. We all understand that, you know? So I remember years ago hearing Bernie Siegel, who'd written a number of books, including Love, Medicine, and Miracles, that he, he was lecturing at a church I was working with, and, uh, and he said, don't do things to not die. And I thought, wow, what? that's kind of a crazy thing to say. He says, no, he says, because if you're doing something to not die, he said, I've got news for you. Vegetarians, joggers, they all go. Everybody goes. He says, but do something because it makes you feel more alive. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really good, because that actually in itself is empowering. So don't go for a walk around the block because you think, oh, if I don't walk, I'm going to die. No, walk around the block because doing the walk around the block makes you feel more alive and you like the feeling of being more alive. Eat the salad because you like the way it makes you feel, not because, oh, if I don't eat salad, I'm going to die. You're going to die anyway, right? And we all are. I mean, that's the bad news, you know? But the fact is, spirit that you are is not even limited or contained in your body. Spirit that you are is, is so much greater that it's just this, this suit of clothing. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. So if you say, the point is that if what you say ultimately becomes true, because there's a spiritual law in operation. So if you say my life is good, the law comes in to support your life is good. And if you say my life is horrible, nothing ever works, I'm so lonely, I'm broke, I'm this, I'm that, then the law just comes in to support your belief, your thought. Your f so if, if you live in fear, you're not going to be healthy or happy or at peace, right? Doesn't that make sense? If you're living in fear, right, your life will match the picture in your head. And so we have to, all, each of us, own that we are a creator. Our minds is a creative center of our life. And again, I say that a victim is powerless, right? So wh what does this mean? If you don't take the responsibility you're never going to get out of a diseased condition in your life, whether it's an unhealthy relationship or a bad job or the disease of poverty or a disease in your body temple. So if we go to victim or blame or shame or guilt, you know, 
that all of that will make you afraid to take responsibility, right? You can't be blamed if you're innocent. Well, you know, so here's, here's, here's what will help you today, is what helped me, is that at an earlier time, we did not know any better. You know, we didn't have any better information, but now we do. So there's no blame. There's no blame. You know, now you've learned something greater. A lack of knowledge is actually a lack of power. Right? So to have more knowledge, we are empowered to live our life in a greater way. And we say, well, how did I get here? Well, you know, all of us, it's a little different, but, you know, we gave our power away, or we weren't thinking, or we were lazy. But now we, the important thing is that now, in this moment, right now, today, we can get our power back. So spirit that we are has awareness, right? Everybody understands that. Spirit, it, consciousness that you are, has awareness. Now, here on Earth, spirit needs a body. Why does spirit need a body? To experience love, to experience sunsets, to have chocolate, you know, the, all of these things. In other words, to create, to have experiences, and to send those experiences back to source. Because all of it is spirit seeking a greater expression of itself by means of us. Um, so I've been reading uh, a book um, called The Agony and the Ecstasy. It's by Irving Stone. He wrote it in about 1960, and it's all about Michelangelo. Um, and I, every once in a while, I pick it up and I read a couple of chapters and stuff. I, probably many of you read it in high school or college. It was a very popular book years ago. And, um, and, and I love it because now uh, that I'm older, I have actually been to a lot of the places they're talking about in the book. So when they mention some historic place or some cathedral or some sculpture or something like that, I think, oh my God, I have seen that. I have seen that. And that's, I just love that. So anyway, they, they said to Michelangelo um, about the finished masterpiece, you know, uh, what... Uh, my interpretation is the finished masterpiece always exists already in the mind of God. Now, Michelangelo was asked how he sculpts great works out of a block of stone, sometimes a block of stone that other sculptors would reject. And he would say, I remove all that is not the Pieta. I remove all that is not Moses. I remove all that is not the David. Right? Because the Pieta was in there. The David was in that block of marble. And he knew that. And his job was to take away everything else. And so I think this is very similar to our life on a spiritual journey that we teach in the science of mind that everything we need actually exists within us. We say, well, well, where is it? Well, there's just some extra stuff on top, extra beliefs that we have, things that do not serve us. Uh, I'll just call it dead wood um, that, is, that is not making us more. So spiritual truth is not a fact. It's a path a way we live our lives. We want to live our lives according to principles of spiritual truth. You know, because when we're living according to principles of spiritual truth, we are actually uncovering the masterpiece. You know, so healing and love and money and abundance, those things are the result of the consciousness of health, the consciousness of love, the consciousness of abundance. You know, love, health, money, all of those things, those are not dependent on work or anything external, although we participate in those things, they're dependent, what they're dependent on is a spiritual principle. So I would always say to people, you know, people say, well, if, it's, if, you know, if, my, if my abundance is dependent on spiritual principle, I'm going to quit my job and just depend on the principle. Don't. Do not do that. Do not do that. I am on tape and camera now saying do not do that. Why? Because your current level of faith will probably not support you. If you step out way beyond your current level of faith, you're going to crash and burn. And we've probably all done that or seen or known people who've done it again and again. You know, yes, there are some very, very abundant people who do not work. They don't have to. That's their consciousness. If you want to be one of them, work on yours. There are some people who eat Twinkies and Ho-Hos all day long, and yet they seem perfectly healthy. How is that possible? It's their consciousness. They don't have anything wired into the equation that says, this is not for my highest and greatest good. This is not for my highest and greatest expression of life. So again, love, health, work, uh, or, or I prefer to think of it as our creative expression, is an expression, all of these areas of life are an expression of the God presence that is within us. And so we want to bring it to the sharpest, most excellent level that we can, I believe. You know, you can't be, uh, and what I mean by this is that we cannot be saving ourselves. You, you know what I mean when you're saving yourself? 
You know, it's like, well, I'll put in a certain amount of effort, but I'm not going to put in 100% of my effort. You have to put your best into it, as with everything. If you want a bigger life, you have to put your best into work. You have to put your best into your relationships. You have to put your best into health. You have to put your best into um, creating abundance and your creative expression, all of those things. I think we could change the thought, you know, I, I work to make a living, do I work because it is part of how spirit expresses through me? Hmm? I mean, that's a very different thing. I think that's of a higher order. So if you do some creative thing in the world, you might call it a job, you have to know that part of how and why you do that is because that's how spirit currently is expressing through you. Now, I know spirit expresses through all of us in lots of different ways. But if, if, if work is not that for you, then what you want to do is you want to be treating and praying up your consciousness so that you experience perfect creative expression in your life. Remember, our consciousness of health, our consciousness of abundance is greater than any particular external condition. And there will always be um, uh, conditions, right? There are always conditions here. So because we're on a plane of expression that is filled with condition. But the thing is to not be so convinced of the truth of the conditions and know that there is a spiritual reality back of the conditions, and that's what guides us. So we have to keep setting spiritual law in motion. This is what Ernest Holmes talks about again and again and again. I want to be dependent on consciousness, not on some external form. Because if I'm dependent on some external form, as soon as that form changes, oh my god, where did, where did my good go? Where did my good go? I believe we get to choose the level that we're going to function at. You know? And say, so what we could ask ourselves is, you know, what do I believe I'm worth? Do I believe I'm worth having good health? Do I believe I'm worth having an abundant life? Do I believe I'm worth having love in my life? Of course, the answer to all these things is yes. You may not be fully there in your belief yet, but that doesn't mean that God and the universe have not prepared a way for each of us. See, to say I am worth something good, that's my consciousness. And consciousness depends on principle, not on people outside of ourself. Imagine what a gift it would be if we would forget all the times in our life that we have limited ourselves. I mean, just every time you didn't show up as your complete best, every time you didn't give it the old college try or whatever, just all the times that you've limited yourself. We say, oh, that's going to be hard for me, or I don't want to do that, that's going to be so much work. See, we are all part of an infinite consciousness, and consciousness knows no limits. It always has the capacity to expand. You know, people will say to me sometimes, well, doesn't time heal everything? Well, sometimes, but time cannot heal what consciousness has not cultivated. Right? So our job is to be cultivating a greater consciousness, a greater expression of spirit, and then things on the outer plane actually can be healed. See, I believe we all ultimately succeed when we're happy doing whatever it is we're doing in life. You know, and so we're, I think that's what we are working towards, spending more and more of our life energy just doing things that we enjoy doing, whether it's being with people we love, or it could be our job, or it could be with our family. See, because what I get depends entirely on my consciousness. It has nothing to do with other people. So think of all the places in your life where you say, my good is dependent on somebody else. I'll be happy if they call. I'll be happy if they pick me up on time. I'll be happy if they acknowledge me. I'll be happy about, you know, all of those things are externally based, right? It has nothing to do with other people. You know, it's like, like giving this, uh, the soil a particular seed, right? It has, the soil has to do something. Right? And so we treat, we pray, we affirm, we visualize, you know, and our consciousness has to do something when we put all of that good, set all that law into motion. So if you want the universe to be generous with you, obviously you need to be generous with the universe. You know, in the course of life, when many things happen, good and bad, there are people who do well in both good times and bad times. Isn't that an interesting thing? And that, to me, that says that must be a thing of consciousness. They manage their money and they take responsibility for maintaining and expanding their consciousness, you know, and, and, and they come from a place of, of power and empowerment rather than acting out of blame and anger and regret and fear. Ernest Holmes says this in the textbook. He says, sense that the principle of life is producing right action in everything you do, think, or say. The principle of life is producing right action in everything that emanates out from us. He goes on and he says, accept all the good the, universe, the universal supply has for you. 
I love that statement, that it is our job to accept all the good the universal supply has for us. And that good is not limited to money, but it certainly includes it. I would say it includes our health and our creative expression and our loving relationships and peace of mind and on and on and on. You know, the truth is the good that God has created for each of us is here right now. Right? It's pressing upon us, you know, and, 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 and it is absolutely for our, our expression in life. You know, we, by, th by thinking, can bring into our experience, I believe, the greater good that we desire, right? If we think correctly and become a, what Ernest calls a living embodiment of our thoughts. So what this looks like to me when, I, when I'm working on this in my own head, in my own mind, is say, okay, I am the consciousness of health. I am the consciousness of health. I am the consciousness of health. And I say, okay, how do I become more of a living embodiment of health? If I really were the consciousness of health, how would I feel? How would I think of myself? How would I speak to myself? How would I be behaving? If I really were the consciousness of abundance, how would I see myself? How would I think of myself? How would I express that abundance in the world, right? The, see, the future is in us right now. And if, 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 um, so if our flow is blocked, you know, we would say it's never about something outside of us that's blocking the flow of love or money or creativity in our life, you know, because the universe only knows to give to us. Our job, and then if, if the flow is blocked, then my job is to keep the gate open consistently. To, uh, and what I mean by that is that I have to be somebody who is uh, giving, I have to be somebody who is forgiving, I have to be somebody who is practicing gratitude, I have to be somebody who is engaged in a spiritual practice on a daily basis, because I think all of this keeps the flow open and moving. You know, Jesus said, give, and it will be given unto you. So, so now the prayer part. This is what I was going to talk about. No. <laughs> Now the prayer part. So let's turn our attention inward now for a moment. And as we become still and quiet together, let's invite that presence of spirit, the living spirit, the presence of God, into our hearts in a greater way than ever before. And we invite that presence of spirit to move through us in such a way that it makes us into people who are better, better reflections of spirit than we have ever been. So we can step forward into our lives and our world and do those things that just ought to be done by us. So recognizing that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit and knowing that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak the word for each and every one of us here today. And I am certain that we are making our life from the inside out that we are beings of consciousness, and everything we experience is an opportunity for spirit to know itself in a greater way by means of us. So I claim for each and every one of us a life of good health and abundance and great love and creative expression, knowing that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and that includes everything that would add to our life in a healthy way. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we know that right where they are, God is there in its fullness, surrounding them, filling them, lifting them up, healing them. We accept that as the truth this day. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in where so much is going on. And we say, yes, the God that we believe in is bigger than all of that, greater than all of that. And God is present in every bit of it as love, as healing, as right action, as infinite supply. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is healing for every one of us, and we say yes to it. So with a full heart, I give thanks. I release this word. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen.